Spears uh, music. So we're here uh, spotlighting all of the uh, iconic female dance music artists and talking about all the female empowerment uh, through uh, dance music, which, you know, I feel often gets trivialized as just a you know, not as important musical genre, but so many female powerhouses uh, have come through the musical dance genre. Uh, so we are really excited uh, to welcome uh, another rising uh, dance queen, uh, recording artist and actress, Kendra Erica. Welcome to the show. Hi, very excited oh. to be here. Yes. And, and shout out to Joanne Migliano, who has just brought so many fabulous guests our way. Yes, shout out to Joe. Yes. Yo, Joe, what's uh, going oh, on? <laughs> right? Oh, well, you know, I say this all the time that, you know, all businesses, but especially when you're in entertainment and the arts, it's all about relationships and not just... Oh. It, Right. You know, not just uh, looking at the right now, but what's happening right now, but the the long distance, because that's where your long term collaborations come from and great things. Yeah, it's it's all about building relationships and making sure that you that you have that authentic rapport with people, because if if you don't, then it shines through in, in the art and we don't want that. So <laughs> exactly. You know, I, I can't say that enough, especially in music and art. People really do like authenticity. Uh, I know, I know a lot really of the record, do. right. And, you yeah. know, I, I think uh, really one of the good things um, <clears throat> about the post COVID era, I feel is that, you know, 2020, literally like everything kind of came to a halt and uh, anyone who was a creative, you had to find a new way to create, to get out there, to be relevant still, because we couldn't yeah. leave our homes. Well, in most States, <laughs> 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 I mean, I was I was in Florida throughout the throughout the beginning stages of the of the yeah. shutdown, and then and then we reopened, and then um, I was like, okay, all you all you other people, all, all you other states, uh, get get on this clock. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> you know, but I feel like during that time, that's where artists really, you know, I feel became more connected with their fans, their yes. followers, it kind of stripped the veneers. And I feel like that was a good thing. It did. It, yeah. It, it really did because for, for some time now, for a while, there, there just been a lot of noise. And when the noise stopped, that's when ideas really came to life and people became more elevated in their consciousness um, mm -hmm. during, during that time. I mean, I, for, I, for one, when, when all this was happening, I was like, uh, something, something, there's something below the surface that's happening. And it, my third eye opened up and I was able to still write and record remotely and still keep the keep the train going right and it was cool i mean again not that everything else that was happening was cool but you know some of the silver linings of that time is you know you'd have a lot of artists because you know they couldn't tour they couldn't and they're used to that yeah. they just get on like their social media and stream and just start talking to their followers and yeah. we're, and we're connecting in a way Traditionally, before that, you know, we follow the machine and, oh, don't get too close, don't interact, this, that, and all that. So it was really cool just to see people just kind of saying, hey, I'm going live tonight. What do you want to talk about? Yeah. And and like you said, it stripped the veneer. It stripped the machine aspect of, of music because this was a time where this particular circumstance affected everyone no matter your status your your credit score your your race your gender this this affected everybody it was so, it was the great neutralizer it, it was the great neutralizer and that's that's a, a great aspect and a great outcome of the great awakening and as we're going through this whole spiritual awakening right now still authentic authenticity is the battle cry yes 
Yeah. And so now, Kendra, it's very exciting. So it is a challenge and hard to get one song placed on the Billboard charts. Yes. <laughs> Just one alone. But you have had five Billboard top ten dance hits. <laughs> oh, exciting. <Yay. laughs> Yay. Hey. Yeah. And, and one of which went number one. So uh, 2019, you had a number one hit. Um, uh, so you did a remake of, uh, well, you know, remake cover, whatever we want to call it. Yeah. Everybody has a different rent, rent, <laughs> tribute, rent, 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 inspiration, rent. tribute, you know. <laughs> Um, uh, <laughs> right. Um, so uh, look for all my eighties babies. Um, Laura Branigan's massive female empowerment hit "Self Control," which we just played before the break. I mean, talk about like power, power a song. So, yeah. what, all right. So, of all the songs to pay tribute to, what drew you to that particular uh, song, which was an anthem of itself? Oh, anthem. Oh, you just you just said it right there. Well, I'd per growing up in Boca in Boca Raton, mm -hmm. Florida during during my teens and and early twenties, I was singing a lot in in bars and restaurants and in clubs. And I would do and I would do covers, and I would always slip that one in and whenever I would perform it 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 was a different experience than performing all the other covers there was just something to it that was like pulling pulling me towards it there was a, this gravitational uh, effect so and being that I had had charting hits before that I said how about I take this 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 powerful song that's making me feel this way and add my own signature onto it. So Damon Sharp and I, we got into the studio and we, we cranked this one out and it's, and the rest is, the rest is history. Yes. Uh, number one charting history. Num yeah. Number one charting history. Yeah. And and so, <laughs> You know, not to toot our horns or anything, you know. So, uh, so now your version um, has what I feel, and you know, thread like sound, a continuous thread that through um, a lot of your songs has, uh, to my ear, like a kind of an ethereal um, <clears throat> a tone. You know, to it almost a little bit of uh, the traditional sort of new wave ambient uh, uh, tones woven through with like right. you know, right with with the hot dance beats. So I'm I'm, I'm catching what you're putting out there, Laura. <laughs> Yeah. So now is that like, because every artist, a song to song is different, but you know, every artist has their signature sound, right? Yeah. So is that a conscious uh, choice? Like when you're picking how you want the songs to sound, you know, that kind of ethereal thread to it, or is it just, it just kind of uh, naturally happens? It naturally just ebbs and flows with the, with, the collaborator like there are many different variables that go into the the ebb and flow right the mm -hmm. collaborator the type of song that we want to put out and just the 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 message so especially with my new one have my way with you that just dropped a couple weeks ago that's it's it's indicative that there's that there's a different kind of sound there however it still sticks within that that tonality that I keep streamlining mm -hmm. but a lot of people when they heard that song they're like is that you is that you rapping in there and I'm just like yeah my name yeah. is my name is little vanilla bean how how are you like, <laughs> <laughs> my name is little red ginger how are you yeah right so that song in in particular there there are it's very dynamic. So mm -hmm. I needed to, I needed to be, be as, as flexible and as dynamic as possible when recording that one.
Yes. Now, um, Damien Sharp has produced for um, so many amazing mega stars. Yeah. So, first of all, how um, did you to uh, get connected professionally? And, you know, what was it like collaborating with him when he's created some of the biggest hits out there? So I was introduced to him through Jason Dalman, my billboard promoter, and shout out to him because I was working with a team of writers initially back in like 2016, 2017, and I was working with a team of New York writers, and we we were trying just to come up with that kind of breakthrough sound, breakthrough song, and just nothing nothing was really sticking, and. Jason just had this idea that uh, why don't you come out to LA and work with the people that I know and in, in my network and he sent me Damon Sharp's stuff and I liked it and I was like I I'll yeah I'm I'm down with working with him <laughs> so that's how, so that's how Damon Sharp and I got got linked up and we've 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 cranked a lot of stuff out that is that is charted and we have we have a lot of other stuff that has been unreleased but that's that's on the that's on the horizon to release right yeah hey that's a good problem to have right it's such a good problem i i like i like having champagne problems yeah exactly Uh, so now you have such a beautiful voice and tone that really would lend to so many genres. So what what is it about the dance music genre that really attracted you and made you decide, hey, this is really where I want to carve my niche as an artist? Well, I've always had this this draw to dance music. Even when I was a teenager, I would listen to a lot of dance music when I was working out or just going throughout my day or just driving around. And it's that kind of genre that elevates anybody and it, and it can, and it has transcending capabilities too. And Mm -hmm. especially now a lot of different other genres are now using and converging with dance music because they see the the power of it they see the unspoken power behind it but you know little me had that foresight and (laughs) and so now i'm i feel like i've created a mark in in dance music Yes. And, uh, you know, I think that one of the things that uh, all dance music has and what you were saying, like the different pockets and influences, because there are a lot of subgenres within dance music. You know, you have the club music, house, which I feel house music and yeah. dance music are like this, uh, different uh, sides of the same coin. Then you have EDM and, and trance music, which is more just like wordless kind of ambient sounds but yeah. you know right but the thing that i feel all the genres of dance music have is the beats and the hooks that just get your get your attention and you know just makes you want to get up uh, and move so when you're working with your producers um do you like um what's your process in kind of picking the beats and the uh, you know the, the chord progression and the overall sound and vibe of the song it it depends on the collaborator or producer that I'm working with, like with uh, Damon, for for instance. Whenever we start to embark on a new song, I send him references, and then he crafts a a beat or a track based off of those references that I've that I've sent him. Mm-hmm. And once he sends me the track, I listen to I listen to it once. Because if I listen to it a second time, I'm going to start coming up with melodies and then I'm going to become attached to them. So Mm. I like to just listen to it once and then we go into the studio and then we collaborate together with we and we're we come from a very open minded place. And other other producers that I have worked with, uh, Luigi Lugo Gonzalez, who I did Thriller Kill or not. um, I did So Fly and Have My Way With You. We we craft the 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 song and the the track and the beat together mm-hmm. and that's that's another 
cool experience too because then you can hear different elements and you can you can be inspired by by the Frankenstein as it's being as it's being built so it de- it depends on the collaborator but through and through it's it's a matter of just building building the sound together a, a true collaborative process yeah well, I think another test is if, you know, you can play it in your car and it just makes you want to crank it up and yeah. uh, move and groove. Because really, like, I feel in that regard, dance music and, and rock music are similar to that. You know, the, the litmus of a great dance song or a great rock song is when it, do you want to crank it up in your stereo, oh, you know, in your car and just sing and groove to it. <laughs> Yeah, and there's a lot of and with rock and with dance, dance and and electronic and house. Mm-hmm. The common theme of those two genres is freedom. Mm-hmm. freedom yeah, being uninhibited and not in. I mean, other other genres are cool too, but there's a little bit of a four wall effect with them. But yes. with dance, but with dance and rock. You can, you can, you can spice that up. You can, you can flavor it however you want to, and you can just be, be as elevated as you want to be. And I think a lot of, uh, more so with dance music than rock music, I think a lot of ongoing themes, if you look at so many of like the big dance hits, love is, is a big theme through so many of the big dance hit songs. Like if you look at like, let's say we were just listening to some Britney Spears, you know, oops, I did again. Really, that's about a dating relationship, toxic. That's about a womanizer. You know, you look at um, Madonna, open your heart, you know, a lot of them, you know, love CeCe Peniston, finally, you know. And also, oops, oops, I I did it again. It's also about the uh, the Titanic, too. I thought the old lady dropped it in the ocean in the end. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and you know, that's the thing I love about like Britney and Madonna, especially in the 90s and early 2000s. So many of their lyrics, just like you said, were so clever, where they'd, they'd slide in other pop culture references yes. that you almost miss if you're not really paying attention. Well, and that's why I that's why I've covered and i've incorporated a lot of those 80s and 90s and y2k elements into into my music because that's when music was kind of like there 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 was no hidden agenda it was just it was just open terrain and any and anything goes and people were not afraid to take risks whereas Mm -hmm today people are kind of hesitant to take risks because of the 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 increased sensitivity and the thing is is that you need like you you need sensitivity but in in a very fearless way right and that's why that's why 80s and 90s and a little bit the y2k and also 70s too like oh yeah well disco was the building block of uh, every uh, dance music genre that's followed in the decades since. You know, if you didn't have groups like Chic and Donna Summers and Thelma Houston and The Emotions, you're not, you're not going to have a Britney Spears, a Demi Lovato, a Ariana Grande, a Justin Timberlake, Daft Punk, you know, because uh, all these uh, groups, every dance genre, pulls some degree from the foundation of disco music. Yeah, they they do. The 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 mirror ball is the is the GPS. Yes, that's yeah. I, I do happen to have a small mirror ball in my house. I know that's 
Well, I I need to get one because yeah. I I I certainly need to get one for my for my place. I need to funk this place up. Give me that's right. <laughs> I always say there's never a wrong time for sparkle. It elevates right. your vibration. Uh, there's a holiday sparkle, summer sparkle, you know, evening sparkle, right. daytime sparkle, you know, shimmer and sparkle or hand in hand. There's denim sparkle. There's cocktail sparkle. You know, it's just a sparkle bonanza. I had I had a I uh, I had a friend of mine who always put like sparkle on her on her skin and like and like tanning lotion and that's I, me. And, yeah and I I I gave her a hug one time and I was wearing a white jacket and I was like oh there goes my white jacket like oops <laughs> well uh, you know well a little a little tip of that of that I'll give everybody is if you're wearing a strapless dress and you have to go out like to a red carpet event or something and if you're a little fair or say you know if your upper arms isn't your favorite spot to show if you put a little illuminator right on like on your shoulder and the middle of your bicep when the lights hit you when the camera hits you it gives you like a nice little glow and a nice, little con a nice little contour and highlight. So. Right, right. Just like the face contouring your body in the yeah. right spots when you're getting photographed, it creates like a visual optical illusion. Yes, it's it direct the light. It, cre it creates it creates your version of of Gerard Butler in Three Hundred because we all know those abs were spray painted on. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> He's so busy, he got no time to to, to, do, get, to get a twelve to, pack to, to do, to do twenty thousand uh, crunches. That's right. That's right. So, and now uh, talking about some of your other songs. So, of course, your new single is Have My Way With You. And uh, so I love the song, uh, you know, on many levels. But one of the things that I love about it that, you know, we were talking about this before the break, that I don't feel that people really give the dance genre en uh, enough credit because and just look at it like trivial and fluffy. But a lot of the great dance hits also have a strong message of female empowerment and embracing yeah. our sexuality and strength as, as a woman. And I really love, uh, you know, that element that it is woven artfully through Have My Way With You. So, you know, can you talk a little bit about that angle and, you know, the importance of just get, getting out there to be confident in yourself, your body, your sexuality, you know, romance and all that mm -hmm. good stuff? Well, when I when I was writing the song with with Luigi and Ali J, both Ali J and I, we we hit it off immediately because we both are are very you know self assertive women writers and artists in this industry, and honing in that 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 playful power and and knowing and and also channeling that when you are in a fiery new dynamic and relationship, all of the, all, all those feelings are, are incredible. And so, and so uh, ripe. And so that's, that's where we came from with writing, have my, have my way with you. And the, the title alone is kind of, is kind of jarring too, because especially in these times, it's like, yeah, it's a way? very bold, a bold, it's like, it's it like, shouldn't be, but with all the, it should, it, it, it really shouldn't be. And I, and I was going back and forth with, uh, with former, uh, uh team members that I had and they, they were hesitant. They're like, oh, have my way with you oh, with all the me too. And I'm like, this is coming from a woman's POV. This is coming Why? from a, wom a, a woman's stance. Like, I feel would, like you would, you would think after everything that we've that 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 women have gone through to say, "Have my way with you." The tables have turned. That's that's anthemic right there. Why? Yeah. To me, it's it's really a a throw to a lot of the songs, Madonna. 
put out like yeah. in the 90s express yourself erotica you yeah. know like, right it's about like hey you know this is what i want and this is what i yeah. need and i'm not apologizing for it like yeah you know, and i'm not saying that i'm gonna chain you up so relax like. right exactly <laughs> It's just saying, let's get the party started. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but, you know, I think it, it speaks to a, a lot of our society's contradictory messages. Like, men don't go through this, you know, where, okay, be soft, but be strong, you know, be this, but be that, you know, you're supposed yeah. to be the responsive to sexuality but not you know own it and then if you are oh you're this you're that and a third and a this and a that yeah. i mean and it's just a bunch of malarkey uh, and you know i mean men go through their own uh things that society puts all this different stuff on them but you know yeah. women have to carry this bag where, where if you you know get sucked into it which I choose not to um, yeah. you know that there's so many people out there e even other women getting in your ear of oh you should be this but not that and that and if you own this you're that and if you express this you're that you know meanwhile yeah. we're all out here living our life like, that's the thing I don't get is why people are so, like, not all people, but a lot of people, like, thinking they can tell everybody what to do, how they should live, how they should think, how they should move in this world, judging their lives, putting a P. I'm like, you know, let people be and be who they are. You're not in my life. I, I'm not living your life. You're not living mine. Well, so and, and like I have I have a I have a uh, I have a saying um well for first of all the media and social media has become this like prison of opinions first of all and mm -hmm. then and then and then second of all if if you don't have the balls to put yourself out there that doesn't give you a like to stand on and telling me on how I should put myself out there because and but it's it's also a double edged sword, too, because perception is reality. And if you're if you're like I, I have a um, I have a, a, a friend of mine and I'm going to say this like really openly right now. She she had her objective is to is to attract like prestigious and upstanding members of society and upper e echelon people. But then again, she's going online and she and she's posting thirsty pictures, like mm. very, very body revealing. And I'm like, it's kind of a mismatch. So we have to deal with the 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 the, the fact that perception is is reality. So if you and if you, you can say that just to interject uh, for yeah. men as well, like yeah. I don't feel this is a female exclusive thing like myself. Oh, yeah. I'm not really into seeing people like all glisten and sending me crazy stuff and and seeing you all kinds of ways and this and that, and especially if I'm going to do business with someone. If you lead with that, that's saying to me you're not professional and you're not the kind of person I want to collaborate with. But, yeah. you know, you there should not to say we don't have many sides of ourselves and shouldn't authentically be all the things that we are. But when you're talking about things you're giving out for public consumption, yeah. you, you, you have to decide, okay, well, how do I really want to be seen? What are the messages I really want to be set up? Because, you know, people that we don't live in a box will kind of be like, okay, they're naked. So that means they have one kind of morality. I don't necessarily yeah. want to do business with that person. So you have to kind of think in a broader way when you're making these kinds of choices. You just have to look inside and use your inner discernment, which like everyone, everyone has a, a very, very in tune discernment. It's, it's just been, it's been diluted and kind of suppressed because of all this noise. <laughs> so, right. so, but uh, and I and I feel especially during this time, during this whole spiritual great awakening, people are people are waking up to that and they're they're honing they're honing their power because for for so long they've been told, oh no, like these these 
these big conglomerates hold the power and you're just here to to be enslaved in sort of this sort this this boxed in way of, of doing and thinking right but 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 nowadays and i'm i'm a big proponent of this is 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 freedom like yeah. just <laughs> like we we're so blessed to live in 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 america as it is so and so many people have made sacrifices to get us here. So why don't we just enjoy it? <laughs> right. And yeah. you now also, I feel jumping off of what you're saying about freedom. You know, part of freedom is just being comfortable with yourself and focusing on working on yourself and not yeah. being obsessed on what everybody else is doing, jumping in their grits and thinking you yeah. have a and thinking you have a place to you know let them do you you do you you work on yourself and who you want to be what you want to put out how you want to uh, evolve yourself and because really how are you living your own life and on your path to your best self if you're all in oh look at what this one said this is how you should know you're not up and all this stuff but yeah. the, more, the more you're focused and talking on about other people and how they should live in all those moments you're not working on yourself or experience pouring into yourself into something that's going to elevate yourself yeah ele ele elevation comes with with going in and doing the hike in in pure like almost almost like isolation but also mm -hmm. just cli climbing, climbing and staying in your in your lane and breathing and breathing air that's that has been untapped. <laughs> yes, that's yeah. so true. Like, because you have to I talk a lot about this, you know, part of self love, self care and evolving is spending that time trying to discipline your mind just to be quiet and still having yeah. that time just with yourself where you're thinking, you're meditating, you know, we're looking uh, int intentionally looking at the things that hurt us, our traumas, why it made us feel this way, making sure we're not carrying that over into current situations, you know, being yeah. good to ourselves, talking to our inner child, you know, doing that healing the inner work. child. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's all. And I've, and I've learned this because I've been such a, I've been such a big self critic, like my whole, my mm -hmm. whole career. And in, in, in some cases it's done more inner damage to me than it has growth. Because when, when you're not, when you're not kind to yourself, who, who is, and exactly. then when so when someone does flash you a smile or show you a little bit of kindness, but there's a motive behind it, then that can be dangerous too, because you're just going after, oh, this, this temporary feeling as, a, as opposed to, as opposed to investing in the, in the, in the fulfillment. Yes. And, you know, you have to give yourself grace and, and t and embrace yourself when you make mistakes, you know, and yeah. and, and I think, you know, uh, the, the and path, learn to laugh at yourself, too. Yeah. Actually. So not take everything so seriously. And, yeah. you know, we're in a journey. So we're going to make mistakes. Sometimes we'll make, you know, decisions or reactions more based on emotion and less logic and cool temperedness. And you have to give yourself permission to make those mistakes and be kind to yourself and, and let yourself grow, you know, and come. Yeah. And, Give your own self compassion, you know, because nobody's nobody's perfect. Yeah, and 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 I also say I'm like if if you don't if you don't own your shit, someone else will, and you're not gonna like what they do with it. So exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs>
<laughs> so, you know, uh, we were uh, talking in our previous segment about, you know, uh, so many of the great dance artists that uh, one of their areas of influence is fashion. Um, yes. Uh, yes. So, uh, you know, um, the, make sure not only do you check out Kendra's music, but all of your music videos I love. They're like little mini movies. Um, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, great fashion. And, you know, the dance music genre really has a long-standing history of sparkle and shimmer and, and, and shine. So can you talk a little bit about your um, fashion as a recording artist, who some of your fashion influences are, your kind of like go-to, and when you're making your music videos, what your process is in picking at your looks and outfits? Well, when it comes to being on on set or when I'm doing a shoot or a video, I do have a stylist and because they they can they can see they can they have a, a broader spectrum view on what what looks good, what will portray well on on camera. So I delegate to them when I'm making quality content, mm -hmm. but just uh, day to day. I, I just like to be comfortable in, in what I wear. Like I'm always in leggings <laughs> or I'm always in, in like spandex shorts with like a, an off the shoulder, like as you're seeing right now, off the shoulder, just sweater. I'm all about um, the off the shoulder. Yeah. Just some, just something comfortable. And I'm not a spouse to any, to any brands. I mean, if it, does, if it, if it is a brand, great, I can, I can tag them in my socials and they'll, and I'll, I'll get a, I'll get a nice hefty like, but just in general, I like to, I, I like to be breathable. I like to be in something that I can move around in and just because when like, when, when you feel when you feel constrained when you when you feel um confined you, you your free flowing thoughts are are going to be are going to be uh, hindered by that and impeded so i just like to always be in a in a in a state of comfortability so that the the thoughts can free flow <laughs> Yes, uh, we we get all our inspiration and all our creative messages. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so now, who are some of the uh, dance music artists that have inspired you over the years? I like what Inna has done because, and I I kind of follow her 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 model that she set out. Uh, she's a, an, an artist from uh, Bulgaria and she, I've, I've followed her since I was in my, in my teenage years. And she, she's a single by single girl. Uh, she, she's put out albums before, but she just likes it to, to be single by single. So I like what she's done. I also appreciate uh disclosure i like their yes. vibe it's very it's very housey i like gorgon city kylie minogue that's a that's a, a an ambassador right there for yes. for dance for dance music and who else i well uh see there, there's a see see yeah see see uh peniston I I enjoy as well Laura Branigan, obviously. And, and you know, then she would rock pop. Pat yeah. Benatar definitely like a lot of her music was so well. All, it was all girl power, you yeah. know. But a lot of it was very danceable. It was, and just just in general, I I like to to do my own research when it comes to the music that that I like. Um, because I don't want to be boxed into the mainstream. So I just mm -hmm. do my own research and whatever I, whatever I gel with, whatever resonates with me, that's what I, that's what I go for. Maya back in the day, she was a great one. Uh, uh, Fallen and a uh, yeah. Cape of the Axe, right? Yeah. And I, and she always had amazing choreography in all of her videos. Yes. 
yeah for yeah. for sure yeah well it's it, it's all about the the overall the overall vibe and if you if you have a driving and invigorating beat behind you with a bunch of other synths that can that can make it really really gritty and memorable that's that's all you need yeah uh, so now for our aspiring artists uh, out there watching and listening um, who aspire to be on the billboard charts, you know, and, and a successful artist like yourself, you know, what are some advice that you, that you uh, would give? I would say hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. That's a, that's a quote from my dad that has stuck with me for for a long time another piece of advice would be don't sell out i don't care what they're telling you i don't care how much money they're they're bribing you don't sell out because it's going to disrupt your sleep at night if you if you've known that you've that you've sacrificed your morals and and bent the knee just to just to have a quick flash of, of attention um, and notoriety and, and also just keep your, keep your circle, keep your circle small too. Mm -hmm. And, and also don't be afraid to, to say no, or don't be afraid to speak up just because these people that are, paying attention to you have worked with so-and-so does not mean that they know what's best for you because every right. artist is different. So don't be afraid to speak up. Hard work be sound and talent doesn't work hard. Keep your circle small and don't sell out. Yeah, and I think on that note, like you said earlier about being authentic, authentic to yourself, to your music, knowing who you are and want to be as an artist. Um, yeah. and, and I think also not being afraid to change. You know, it's yeah. not a bad thing to mid-course switch up styles, try something yeah. different, you know, because a lot of times in the business they, okay, this formula works. So just keep doing that. Oh my God, no, you can't do this and do that. And, oh, what'll happen? Oh, you know, again. Yeah, because and, that go and that goes back to like, people are just so afraid to take risks. And I'm like, how do you think, how do you think Cher got to where she is? How Hello. do you think Madonna got to where she is? She went, Tina and they, Turner. They, they went, uh, they went against the grain. <laughs> Right. That's, so we need to bring back going against the grain as being the new freaking cool. <laughs> Le leaders set trends. They don't follow them. Yes. Yes. I exactly. So and and if you're we can't create out of fear. It's as simple Amen. as that. <laughs> And I think that that's also a really good point when you were talking about your team, having a team around you that understands that, like, look, you're not like everybody else. You don't think like everybody else. You want to take yeah. risks and, and change and pivot, and they need to be okay uh, coming along for, for that ride. For Yes, because... It's a ride. And if you got motion sickness, then uh small world is, is right, then small world is right there. Okay. Yes. Get get on the get on the tugboat or right? get on the tugboat, right? Right. So I know uh, charity and, uh, you know, giving back and philanthropy is something yeah. that's really important to you as an artist. So can you talk a bit about that and some of the, you know, charities that are, are important to you that you like to lend your support to? Well, what is what is success if you if you can't if you can't put it back into the the, the flow of society? Right. Because if you're if you're successful, you want to pay it forward. And I've I've always been a big believer in in children, in education, and in and also just being being 
uh, philanthropic in those two in those two areas of of charity. Like I, I'm a, I I support the prevention of human trafficking and and stopping pedophilia because most of the problems in today's world stem from sexual abuse and a lot of the confusion like in like individual confusion and sexual confusion has stemmed from sexual abuse so putting an end to that and 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 eradicating that and demolishing that i i feel there will be a, a brighter tomorrow and a brighter future for women children and also young men and healing the trauma and healing the trauma it. yes yeah well and, and of course you know one of the greatest ways to be on the path to healing our trauma is to listen to great music uh, it so, is it's yes. the healing factor Yes. So uh, it has been a delight having you on the show, Kendra. Um, if you're ever in Philly or in the East Coast, let me know. Uh, yes. If you have the support. Uh, so where can our listeners and followers find you on social media? Me on social media, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Kendra Erica Music. You can find me on Instagram at Kendra Erica tiktok at kendra erica and twitter at kendra erica and you can also find my my videos and and music on youtube as well apple music spotify and uh, just uh google me so and that's erica with a k erica with a k yeah don't, yeah don't put no c in there okay that's right <laughs> <laughs> well everybody make sure you go out and and follow uh, kendra and listen to her music and download you know and pay for it if preferable you know we do uh, we do appreciate the paid downloads and not just the free streams so we right? want to support our artists yeah. uh, so, so ching, thank you ching. for ching, ching. <laughs> so, thank you so much uh, for being on the show. We're going to jump into another musical break. Of course, you can follow me on the Instagram and TikTok at the Laura Masrick and the Style and Empowerment Chat, Laura and Friends Facebook page. Always bringing you the best artists and music. Uh, so I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. And we're going to jump into some more great music. And we'll be back after this. Thanks, Laura. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> 